Good afternoon. My name is Juliet Compston, and I'm editor-in-chief of the Journal of Bone and Mineral Research. And uh, what I want to talk about in this webinar is checklists which help you to get your paper published in JBMR. Guidelines for different types of studies are increasingly used as a means of improving the reporting of research and also ensuring reproducibility and transparency. Many journals, of which JBMR is one, now require checklists for guidelines to be completed with the submitted article where appropriate. So the aim of this webinar is to outline the guidelines currently required by JBMR and to provide some advice about how they should be used and how they can improve the quality of submitted work. The use of guidelines in research has many benefits. They are an important aid to reproducibility. And if all aspects of a study are clearly described, then it should be possible for the findings to be reproduced by other groups. The checklists also provide transparency about how the work was done and enable the reader to check the accuracy of the results. Finally, guidelines ensure that sufficient detail is provided in a paper and also help the writer of the paper to make it concise, logically ordered, and well written. Use of the guidelines will help to improve your submission in several ways. The, the checklists draw attention to essential information that must be provided by an author for the reviewer and the reader to make an informed assessment of its quality and interpretation. The guidelines also offer helpful advice about study design and conduct, and they improve communication of research findings to the broader scientific community. This slide summarizes how to access and to complete the checklists uh, included for JBMR publications. First of all, all the relevant guidelines can be accessed through a link in the JBMR author guidelines. And the checklist simply asks you to enter the page number on which the relevant information is provided. I'll show you some examples of this later on. Sometimes not all of the information requested is relevant to your particular study, and if so, just put not applicable. What we recommend very strongly is that the checklist is completed during the process of actually writing up the study. This will help you to ensure that all the essential details are included. And it is also essential to upload the completed checklist with the manuscript at the time of submission. If manuscripts are submitted that need checklists but don't include them, uh, they will be returned so that the uh, checklist can be done. We use four sets of guidelines for JBMR submissions. We use ARRIVE for animal research, CONSORT for clinical trials, PRISMA for systematic reviews and meta-analyses, and STROBE for observational studies. And I'll talk about all of these um, in a little more detail uh, in the following slides. So ARRIVE stands for Animal Research Reporting of In Vivo Experiments. And one of its main objectives is to maximize the amount of high quality data from a minimum number of experiments to avoid unnecessary animal use. ARRIVE is endorsed by over 600 journals now, so it's very widely used. And although the um, time taken to complete the checklist obviously varies a bit, in general it would take between 10 and 30 minutes to complete. The Publications Committee of uh, JBMR and also the editorial team have produced some modifications of the ARRIVE guidelines to ensure that they are appropriate for bone research. 
When you submit a paper on animal research to JBMR, you'll find that there are two possible checklists, one for uh, in vitro data, where animals are used as the source of tissues or cells, and one for in vivo studies, where data from uh, living animals are reported. This slide shows an example of the arrived checklist. And in all our checklists, um, the, the basic format is the same. So in the left-hand column, you have uh, the recommendation. And here we see um, the checklist for in vitro experiments, um, state the species of animal used, state how the animals uh, used will meet the needs of the scientific objectives, etc., etc. And all we ask is you simply put the page number in the right-hand column uh, where the recommendation has been um, fulfilled. The next set of guidelines I'll talk about are the consort guidelines. Um, these are probably the most well-established guidelines in um, use, and CONSORT stands for Consolidated Standards of Reporting Trials. And basically, the purpose of CONSORT is um, to provide an evidence-based minimum set of recommendations for the reporting of randomized uh, clinical trials to obviate the problems arising from inadequate reporting. So CONSORT includes a 25-item checklist and also a flow diagram, which I'll show, show you in a moment. And again, CONSORT is widely endorsed um, across scientific journals. Uh, almost 600 journals currently use it, and over 50% of the core medical journals um, listed in PubMed also use it. And again, the time, to take, the time taken to complete the checklist will vary a bit, but um, generally, I would estimate between 10 and 30 minutes. So for consult, you will be asked to provide two things. One is the information that is required in the consult checklist. And the other is a flow diagram in um, consult format, which I'll show you. And the, the material can be provided as supplemental in, information uh, if it exceeds the page limits, which is quite often the case. Well, uh, here we have an example of the consort diagram. Um, many of you will be familiar with this. And what it basically does is map the progress through the phases of the trial of um, two groups, which are usually um, what is investigated in randomized controlled trials. So the progress through enrollment, intervention allocation, follow-up, and data analysis. And it allows the reader to see, for example, how many uh, people drop out of the study, how many are lost to follow-up, and uh, importantly, whether, these, um, whether lost to follow-up and dropout are similar between the two groups. And here is an example of a page from CONSORT. Um, again, you've got the same format with the recommendation on the, in the left-hand side column and uh, the page number to be completed in the right-hand column. And this just shows um, the first part of it. Um, it gives you some tips about uh, what should be in the title and the abstract, uh, what should be the introduction, and then some useful um, advice about the design of the trial uh, what you should um, include about the participants, interventions, outcomes, and sample size. STROBE is another set of guidelines we use. Um, it stands for Strengthening the Reporting of Observational Studies in Epidemiology. And its aim is to ensure that um, observational studies are adequately and completely reported. 
And uh, STOVE contains recommendations on how to report the three main types of observational research, which I'll come to in a moment. It's currently endorsed by over 100 journals and uses a 22-point checklist. And again, an approximate time to complete the checklist would be between 10 and 30 minutes. These are the um, three types of study uh, which uh, require STROBE checklists. In STROBE checklist A uh, is used for reporting results of a cohort study, checklist B for reporting the results of a case control study, and checklist C for reporting the results of a cross-sectional study. And here we have an example again of a page from one of the strobe um, checklists. Again, um, this contains advice on what should be included in the title, abstract, and introduction, in the methods, um, how the outcomes and exposure should be defined, and uh, various issues related to the statistical analysis. And for each of these, uh, we just ask you to put the page number on which these um, items are included. And the final set of guidelines um, that we use are the PRISMA guidelines, preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And uh, this material, again, can be provided as supplemental information, or some of it can, um, if it exceeds the page limits for the article. And it contains a 27-item checklist and also a flow diagram. And the time taken to complete the checklist, again, would be in the order of 10 to 30 minutes. So here's an example of the checklist itself. Um, on, on this page, you can see uh, some of the details required in the results section. And again, the format of the checklist for JBMR is the same as for the um, other checklists. And then there's also a flow chart, um, which basically um, goes through the process, processes, first of um, identification of studies, secondly of how these studies were screened, uh, thirdly for the criteria for eligibility of the studies, and finally the details of studies that were um, eventually included for the, in the, the uh, meta-analysis. Okay, thank you so very much, Juliet. We have just a few questions, frequently asked questions, that have come into the JBMR editorial office that we thought would be helpful to include here. Number one, how do I upload the checklist forms with my paper? Okay, so this is um, very simple to do. You simply go to the author guidelines for JBMR, and you'll find that there's a link directly to uh, whichever checklist form you want. So um, it, it's very easy to do. And ju just to um, emphasize again that these forms, where, where they're appropriate, obviously, for the study, have to be uploaded with the submission. Uh, we, don't, we will send back any submission that doesn't contain a relevant checklist. Great, thank you. The second question is, I do not know which strobe list to fill out. Our paper is an original article on a rare disease, and only a small number of families have been reported. It is neither a short report, nor a cohort study, nor a case control. What is your advice? My advice would be that in such a study, you do not need to complete the strobe checklist, because the strobe checklist is strictly um, either for cohort studies, case control studies, or cross-sectional studies. And um, if you're reporting uh, a, a number of families with a rare disease, it doesn't fall into any of these categories. So you would not need a checklist for such a study. Great, thank you. Next question. I have a question about one of the items in this strobe checklist. I'm unsure of the meaning of report numbers of outcome events or summary measures. Could you please provide an example for what outcome events and summary measures entail? Uh, well, outcome events will be the primary and secondary outcomes of the study. 
um, which al always have to be described either in observational or prospective studies. And summary measures will be the um, measurements that we used to document the outcome events. So, for example, if, you're, um, if one of the outcomes is bone mineral density, then um, the summary measure would be um, measurement of bone density by dual energy X-ray absorptiometry, if that's what's being used. Great. And finally, our manuscript is analysis conducted on a subsample of participants from a larger study. The primary manuscript was published in JBMR. Since the main paper for this clinical trial was published in JBMR, is there still a requirement to submit a consort checklist and flowchart for the subsample analysis? That's a very good, good question and uh, one that we quite often get. And in fact, we um, have looked very uh, extensively at the consort guidelines and also contacted people involved with drawing up the guidelines. And there isn't a definite answer one way or the other. So the first thing to say is if you are presenting a subgroup analysis, uh, you must reference the paper uh, describing the original randomized controlled trial, uh, which will contain a, a consult checklist. Uh, and secondly, you, you don't need to do a flow diagram necessarily for a subgroup analysis, but what's really important is that you make it absolutely clear uh, what the numbers involved in the subgroup analysis were, what the baseline characteristics were, and so on. And it, it may, in some instances, be helpful to include a flow diagram, but it's not mandatory. Terrific. Thank you so much. Just um, <clears throat> say if there are any additional questions, please always feel free to write into JBMR office at Wiley.com. Yes, absolutely. And um, we are very pleased with the compliance with the guidelines. Um, this has really improved over the last year, and I think it um, shows in the quality of the papers we publish. And I'd like to thank the Publications Committee, who have worked very hard on the guidelines, and also Wiley, um, who have worked to make sure that the guidelines are as author-friendly as possible. But we do um, value your feedback, and if there are any um, issues uh, or comments regarding the guidelines, please get in touch with us.